Hello and welcome to another Sporties webinar. We're glad to have you with us today for what's new in ForeFlight. We're gonna be looking at some of the latest features in aviation's top EFB app. My name is John Zimmerman. I'm with Sporties and I'll be your facilitator today. We appreciate you joining us. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan. Ryan has been with ForeFlight for a number of years. He's a pilot. He knows this app about as well as anybody I know. Part of that is because he's built a lot of these features. So you're really going to hear from a pro and an all-time expert on ForeFlight today. Excited to see what Ryan has to show you. ForeFlight, in my opinion, well known for shipping new features all the time. There's always something new. So even if you're a power user, I'm guessing Ryan's going to give you something new to think about that you might not know. So Ryan, take it away. Hey, thanks, John. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to What's New. My name is Ryan. Um, as John mentioned, uh, I've been at ForeFlight for um, a number of years now joined originally back in 2013 uh, and ran the product design department at the company um, in about a year ago I transitioned to a, into a community engagement role and so my role now is head of community um, doing things like this engaging with our community figuring out what people are interested in learning about uh, taking feature requests translating those requests back to the team also working on some new areas of the app uh, in particular what we call the discover tab uh, which we'll get into in this presentation I'm excited to show you that um, for those who are maybe not as familiar to ForeFlight or new to the product, um, basically we build awesome apps for pilots. Um, we like to think of ourselves as um, uh, a company that's really focused on building just next generation apps for planning. Um, and I think a lot of folks think of ForeFlight as a general aviation tool, and we are, and we started in general aviation. Most of the company um, that flies are, you know, GA pilots, and we'll always be focused on general aviation. We also um, make products for other markets as well, business aviation, commercial aviation, even defense. Uh, the company was founded in 2007 by Tyson Wise and Jason Miller. Um, they uh, both met online uh, through some aviation discussion forums. 2007 was an important uh, year. That was the year that the iPhone was first introduced. And so Tyson and Jason got to thinking about what potential this device might have for improving the lives of pilots, and they shipped uh, version one. The first version of ForeFlight actually wasn't, um, wasn't even an iPhone app. It was a website, and you could go to it, and you could enter a airport code and it would spit out a METAR. That was that was version one. We've come a long way since then. Uh, we're headquartered in Austin, but we've expanded now. We have, we have offices in Houston, Portland, Maine, Odense, Denmark, Adelaide, Australia. Over a third of our over 500 employees are pilots. Um, and in 2019, ForeFlight was acquired by the Boeing company. And so we are now an independent subsidiary of Boeing. Um, and in particular, we're part of the Boeing Global Services business unit. So uh, as John mentioned, we we ship a lot. We're always shipping. There's always something new uh, in ForeFlight. Uh, every month, actually, we release a new version of the app. So we're in September now. So we've had nine major releases so far this year. And I'd like to walk you through uh, all of those releases. This is not going to be a super deep dive on how to use every single feature, but rather it's going to be sort of a broad brush. Here's all the interesting things we've been working on why we think they're going to be useful for you. And I'd encourage you, I'll give you some information at the end of the presentation um, to, to dive deeper into those features, learn more about them, how powerful they can be, and how they can improve your, your flight planning process. So I want to start with our first release of the year. That was the January release. That's version 16.1. And there's something important that you should know about this release, which is that it requires iOS 16. Um, ForeFlight generally supports uh, one or two iOS versions back. And um, as of uh, version 16.1, in order to get this update, you'll need to be on iOS 16. Um, if you're on an older version uh, of an Apple device and you can't upgrade to iOS 16, you'll still continue to get uh, ForeFlight data updates, et cetera. But um, if you want the new features moving forward, you need to be on iOS 16 at a minimum. The first feature we introduced in the January release was uh, the ability to configure the format of times and settings for times within the integrated logbook. Um, as many of you may know, ForeFlight has a really powerful integrated logbook, and uh, it's a great logbook to use for a variety of reasons. It can save you a ton of time because um, you know, you're know you flying with ForeFlight, and ForeFlight knows where you're going, takeoffs and landings, nighttime, daytime, et cetera, and so it can actually log those flights for you automatically. Um, but we, we received a variety of different requests from customers to change the format of how times are represented in the logbook, and so we've added that. If you go into the logbook section of ForeFlight, the logbook tab, and you scroll down in the logbook menu to settings, logbook actually has its own settings menu, and you can tap on that. 
And there's a new option up at the top, entry time format. And you can see right now it's set to decimal. Uh, n dot n, but I can tap into that and I can change the format that I want to enter times in and that I want the logbook to display times to me in. And so I could change this to something else. For example, maybe I want to go to multiple decimal places. And when I do that, my times have now been uh, updated uh, on my logbook. So a very minor thing, but interestingly, one of the, the biggest feature requests we had for, from logbook users. And so that was introduced in January. Speaking of formats and changing the, the format of numbers that you see in the application, we received some requests that uh, customers wanted to be able to see coordinates in different formats as well. You know, I mentioned a few minutes ago, ForeFlight is used not just by general aviation pilots, but it's used by commercial pilots. It's used by pilots flying uh, in the Department of Defense. And there's actually a variety of different coordinate formats out there. And you can see pretty much all of them now in ForeFlight. Um, if you're on the Performance Plus plan uh, and you tap anywhere on the map, You'll notice that you have up at the top, you have your, uh, the coordinate for the point that you tapped on. If you select more next to that latitude longitude, you can now go into the copy section and you can copy this, for, this, this latitude and longitude in a variety of different formats. Some of these might be familiar to you, some you may never have seen before, but these are a variety of different formats that are used by all different types of pilots. Um, and so we've included them here. You can also change the default format of the coordinate. If you go up into the settings at the bottom of this screen, this will open up the coordinate settings menu. You can also access this through the general app settings as well. And you can change the default coordinate to a different format and you'll see that format represented in the menu whenever you tap somewhere on the map and look at the latitude and longitude. So that was our January release, a couple of different customization features. Let's move on to the February release. In February, the first thing we introduced was something called the Mora Grid Overlay. MORA, M-O-R-A, stands for Minimum Off-Route Altitude, and it essentially provides pilots a quick way to understand the minimum altitude required for terrain and obstacle clearance in a given area. Um, the MORA grid, actually, before I, before I show it to you, I just want to wanna, uh, give you an interesting example here. Um, the, the MORA grid, as we were developing it, we decided uh, to, to implement it in, in a five degree by five degree grid, all the way down to one degree by one degree. And um, we were thinking, you know, does it really need to go down to one degree by one degree? Is that is that is that uh, a, a little too much? And we decided, no, absolutely not. And um, I wanted to give you an example of, of why that is. Terrain can change very rapidly, uh, especially in, in the continental United States. Um, Right now we're looking at uh, a route from Mount Whitney to Badwater Basin. Um, these are actually the highest and lowest points in the, in the lower 48 states. But Mount Whitney is about 14,500 feet. Badwater Bas Basin is about negative 282 feet MSO. Um, and they're only separated by about 77 nautical miles, the highest and lowest points. And so when we're developing our minimum off-route altitude grid, we decided, yes, we really need to go down to the one degree by one degree. Um, so initially, when you turn the Mora grid on, and you can do that by going up into the aeronautical menu and selecting aeronautical, um, and then going down to the configuration options at the side and selecting under the triple dots, selecting grid Mora. When you turn that on, you're gonna see this green grid. And so initially it's represented as a five degree by five degree grid, <clears throat> excuse me. As you uh, zoom in, it will dynamically condense down to a one degree by one degree uh, grid. And it's gonna have some numbers in it. So let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see some numbers as you zoom in. Um, these numbers are indicating different areas of terrain. Areas with obstacles and terrain under 10,000 feet are depicted in green, while areas with obstacles or terrain exceeding 10,000 feet in height are highlighted in red. The grid Mora uh, in ForeFlight also incorporates an additional altitude buffer of 1,000 feet for areas that include obstacles or terrain at 6,000 feet or less in altitude, and a 2,000 foot buffer for areas that contain obstacles or terrain of 7,000 feet and above. And I just wanted to highlight here that the, the, the grid Mora in ForeFlight differs from AROCA, if, you, if you're familiar with that. Um, that's, that's a US only standard, it's a separate standard. Uh, the grid Mora is a specific uh, ForeFlight grid. Uh, another feature we introduced in this release was logbook student comments. So again, going back to the logbook, a lot of people are using it. It makes uh, logging your flights uh, a lot more efficient, but it also enables uh, communication and collaboration between flight instructors and students. Um, in the latest, in this version of ForeFlight, uh, we've implemented logbook student comments. 
So instructors can now review student comments prior to signing their entries remotely, um, which is great. That ensures transparency and efficiency in terms of what, what CFIs are looking at what they're, what they're, um, when their students are requesting endorsements. Um, and the instructor can easily append notes, sign it, uh, and save that entry to their own logbook uh, with, with no hassle at all. It's really, really handy. Um, I wanted to uh, just highlight here that uh, all the signing and endorsing in the ForeFlight logbook can be done remotely, right? This means that a student can go in and they can create uh, an entry, they can request an endorsement. The CFI will get uh, a link emailed to them um, for requesting that endorsement. They can review it, uh, approve it, sign it. Uh, really, really simple. So that's that's logbook student comments, and that's in uh, this version of ForeFlight. And this is what that looks like right there. Aircraft on the same runway alerts was also in this release. Um, we've been focusing a lot on alerts, proactive features that um, give pilots a, a heads up of information that's relevant to them when they're flying. Aircraft on some, same runway alerts looks like this. Um, when you are on a runway and there's traffic uh, on that same runway, as long as you have that, uh, an ADS-B in source, like the Sentry device connected, you're gonna get an alert. Hey, there's traffic on the same runway as you, and it'll tell you the runway as well. Pretty straightforward. You can enable this uh, under settings. If you go into the more tab, and then under settings at the top of the more tab, if you scroll down in the settings list to the alert section, right here, these are all the different alerts that are available. Most of them are enabled by default. You can turn them on and off as you wish, but this latest alert is at the bottom here, traffic on runway alerts, and you can turn that on or off right there. I also wanted to highlight, I'm going to go back a, a slide here. Um, the top of this alert screen, you can see it says speak all alerts. Um, if you are uh, connected to a Bluetooth headset, if you've connected your iPad or your iPhone to a Bluetooth headset, you'll get the visual alert within ForeFlight Mobile, but you'll hear the alert in your headset as well, which is really useful for a lot of different types of alerts, especially traffic callouts. You know, it'll tell you traffic one mile, three o'clock, right? Uh, right in your headset. So um, if you're interested in that feature, just make sure you have speak all alerts enabled. Okay, after our February release, we uh, went on to release a brand new product for a brand new platform. We call it ForeFlight Voyager, and it is our first product for the Apple Vision Pro. And we got a lot of questions from uh, customers like, why Why are you doing this thing for this, this product? What is, what is the use here? Um, what, what does the future look like uh, for Apple Vision Pro and ForeFlight? And you know, the short answer is that we're all about making software that makes planning and flying easier and safer. And we think 3D visualization is, an, is a tremendous tool for improving situational awareness. So we're viewing ForeFlight Voyager as um, our first sort of foray into augmented reality um, and a really interesting test bed for develop, developing new technologies and techniques that we think are gonna benefit aviation in the long run. Um, ForeFlight Voyager runs on the Apple Vision Pro. You can download it, run it directly on the Apple Vision Pro. And it's essentially a 3D visualization of any airport environment. So you can open it up and you'll see that airport environment right in your living room, in your office, wherever. You're going to see the airport information, latest weather, as well as live traffic. So you can actually see aircraft taking off and landing in 3D um, directly in your environment. The environment itself is fully interactive, so you can take your hands and pinch, zoom, and rotate, and move things around and get up and close uh, to the landing and departing traffic. And we've also added live air traffic control. So when you are looking at a given airport, you can go into the menu and you can select uh, the air traffic control frequency for that airport that you want to listen to. So you can listen to approach as you watch uh, the aircraft uh, on approach, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, Again, lots of different types of aircraft. We've, we've developed custom models for all these aircraft. In the latest version of Voyager, we actually have um, real aircraft uh, liveries, so real real paint jobs on, on the aircraft, mostly for airline traffic and some for general aviation. And so you'll, you're actually gonna see a real, real accurate depiction of what that aircraft looks like. Um, also in Voyager is something that we call um, AI facts. So we're using uh, interesting, uh, AI generated information about different types of aircraft. So if you select an aircraft and you wanna learn more about it, um, you can get a summary of uh, all the different things about that type of aircraft. Voyager also supports something called SharePlay. SharePlay is an Apple uh, technology that allows two people to experience the same environment simultaneously. So if you have a friend or a coworker with an Apple Vision Pro, you can invite them to your SharePlay space in Voyager, and you can see them as well as all the 3D traffic uh, within that same airport environment at the same time. So that's Voyager, and that came out uh, in February. 
Let's move on to March. The March release was Four Flight Mobile 16.3. A couple of interesting things in the March release. The first is power lines. Um, we received a lot of requests from customers, um, both uh, you know hobbyist GA pilots who are flying for fun and uh, occasionally use power lines for um, for navigation VFR, uh, but also uh, you know companies. Um, and pilots who who fly things like pipeline surveys um, who need uh, a better depiction of power lines within four flight mobile and so we're excited to be able to integrate power lines directly into the aeronautical map you can access uh, the power line feature uh, within four flight if you go up into the settings menu and you scroll down to cultural elements and you can select power lines and when you do that you'll see power lines plotted in that uh, reddish brown color directly on the map when you zoom in also in this release, we included a new template for the nav log. So um, if you're not familiar with the planning nav log in ForeFlight, it's a feature available under the flights tab. You can plan your flights here um, and you can select the nav log option up at the top of the screen. And there's a new option and we actually call this out in, in, in this version here. You can see where it says new basic nav log template. You can go up to that settings menu there and you can change the template that's used to generate the nav log. And so we can switch from standard to basic and this gives you a, a nav log that's um, probably a little bit more familiar to folks who are uh, GA private pilots, um, very similar to uh, what a lot of folks, especially in the US, are using, sort of a simplified version of the nav log. And so it has all the information you'd expect, all of your per leg information, et cetera, the uh, space to write down actuals, um, but just simplified vers versus the version that was there prior. Also in this version, we improved how Sentry uh, works with cellular data. So I mentioned Sentry a few minutes ago. Um, if you're not familiar, it's our line of portable ADSB receivers. Uh, they do a lot more than just ADSB though. Of course, Sentry Plus, the latest version has a ton of awesome stuff in it. It's got a G meter, carbon monoxide sensor, uh, carbon monoxide sensor, uh, dual band WAS GPS, all, all sorts of great stuff in there. Um, but one of the interesting things about uh, ADSB, portable ADSB in particular, um, is that it, it used to be uh, when you were flying, you if you were lucky enough to get a cell signal when you're flying, um, you might be able to download some information like radar. We'll use radar as an example, right? So you would get radar over the internet if you were lucky enough to have a cell signal. But then portable ADSBs came out and now the iPad is connected to your portable ADSB. And when you're in four flight, four flight's going to default to using the uh, ADSB radar instead, right? So you would not have access to that cellular derived radar product. However, in this version of four flight, we've enabled both. So when you're connected to ADSB and you have a cell signal, you're gonna see both uh, ADSB radar as well as um, internet based radar as well as well as, as well as all the other products that are available over the internet. So um, that's just a slight change we made required some interesting clever engineering to get that to work and we we're happy to get that out because that was a high customer request. We've also been working on expanding geographically and in this release we uh, introduced VFR charts for southern Africa. So if you're ever flying VFR. Uh, in the southern area of the African continent, you now have VFR charts that are available. And you can add those to your uh, ForeFlight subscription on ForeFlight.com. Okay, we followed the March release with the April release for Flight Mobile 16.4. And this was a good one because we were able to bring something back, lowest tilt radar. Um, ForeFlight had lowest tilt radar product for, for a while, and then it was removed because the provider we uh, were using discontinued that product. Um, and so we actually built our own data pipeline to re-enable lowest tilt radar because it's such a useful feature. For those who are not as familiar with lowest tilt radar, just a, a brief refresher. Um, so this is an XRAD station, and when the XRAD station sweeps the sky for reflectivity, it sends a beam out in 360 degrees, and uh, it actually sends this beam out at different angles, though, different angles of elevation. Most NEXRAD stations are tuned to sweep the sky in 360 degrees from angles of 0 0.5 degrees up to 19.5 degrees. Um, each NEXRAD station can be a little bit different depending on local terrain, et cetera, but most are within this range. The reflectivity that is returned on that lowest angle, the beam that went out the lowest, the lowest angle, we call that the lowest tilt reflectivity. And the worst reflectivity that was returned across all angles of elevation when the next red station swept the sky, we call that the composite reflectivity. So here's an example. We have um, an airport, and over this airport, we have uh, maybe a storm system. 
And the next red uh, will sweep the sky over the airport and it will return refle different reflectivity at different altitudes, right? Well, if you have lowest tilt radar on, you're going to see green because you can see here that's that's the reflectivity that's being picked up by the lowest angle. That's the, the type of reflectivity and type of precipitation that is most likely to be hitting the ground, right? But if you're using composite radar in for flight or if you're on ADSB, um, ADSB radar is always composite, you're going to see magenta in that case because the composite is showing you the worst case reflectivity across all angles of elevation. This makes sense, right? Um, lowest tilt is great to see surface conditions, but when you're flying, when you're in route, you kind of want to see what the worst case scenario is in a given area, and that's why ADSB is composite radar. So here's a quick uh, visual uh, depiction of these two. Um, this is standard radar, so composite, uh, and this is lowest tilt. And so we can see just by swapping back and forth between these two radars, if there is a lot of precipitation depicted in the composite radar, that's not making it to the ground. Lowest tilt's just not picking that up, right? And so that's why we have both. It's great to see uh, what the worst case scenario is and also what the surface conditions are like. Another great weather feature we released in, in this release of Four Flight is something we call reported turbulence. You know, back to our Sentry products for a second. Uh, Sentry is is has been incredibly well received by the general aviation community, and there are a huge amount of pilots flying day in and day out with Sentry across GA, BA, even defense. Um, and so we got our heads thinking about, hmm, how do we how do we make the best use of this uh, of all these Sentry devices that are deployed? And um, we came up with this idea we call reported turbulence. Uh, I want to just show it to you because um, it's uh, it's it's so cool and so interactive. So this is my live iPad screen right here. And right now I have this new layer, reported turbulence, turned on. What I'm seeing here right now is actual turbulence reports measured by the G-meter in sentry devices uh, reported from real flights, right? So these are not uh, these are not manually made pilot reports. These are automated uh, actual EDR scale uh, turbulence reports. And I can see them all across uh, the US and I can see them at different altitudes. So I can move up and down and see, hmm, but how bumpy is it at 7,000? How bumpy is it at 22,000? I can zoom into one of these points and I can tap on it. And I can see how long ago that report was made, the altitude it was made at, the type of aircraft that made that report, what their weight category is, and any reports that were made nearby. So I can see this laterally here at different altitudes on the map, but if I open up the profile view, I can see it vertically now as well. So I have reported turbulence enabled in my profile, and I can see based on the route that I've planned where the bumps are going to be, and I can adjust my altitude up and down uh, if I want to make any decisions uh, about my cruising altitude based on turbulence reports. So that's something we're super excited about. Um, Reported turbulence is included for anyone who owns a Century and has a pro or performance subscription. It includes reports up to 14,000 feet. Um, it's also available as an add-on if you don't have a Century uh, or you're not on a pro and performance plan. You can add this on to your account at forflight.com. So reported turbulence, something that uh, I think is pretty unique, something that you know only a company like Forflight with the with the user base we have with as many people are flying with the product and are flying with Century can do um and something we're going to continue to to enhance uh as we move forward okay moving right along the may release may release was 16.5 um again I, and i mentioned alerts have been kind of a focus for us this year we introduced a new type of alert in four flight mobile 16.5 it is wake turbulence alerts this is what a wake turbulence alert will look like in four flight so as long as you're connected to an adsb source um you know four flight knows where you are it knows uh, where other aircraft are. Because ADSB tells us the type of aircraft it is, the, the tail number and the type of aircraft it is, um, we know the weight category of that aircraft. And in the background, as you're flying, the application is building essentially a 3D model of your trajectory. And it's analyzing, hmm, if you were to cross in this aircraft's wake, what would the effects be? And it's visualizing those effects for you on the map. So there's a couple components to this. The first is that we see the alert itself. I'm, I'm coming up on an aircraft here. It's telling me, hey, caution, wake turbulence. Um, there's a heavy aircraft, 3.7 nautical miles ahead. It shows me, of course, the, the aircraft, its tail number, its direction, its altitude relative to mine. Then we can see a couple different things here. We see this green area. This is the area that 
based on your current trajectory, you are you are safe to pass in, right? So you can pass uh, this aircraft's wake in this green area and uh, be safe from hitting uh, some bad wake turbulence. If you were to pass in the red area, you are much more likely to hit wake turbulence from this aircraft, right? And so this visualization will actually change. You'll see it move and stretch as you as you turn and climb and descend and have, as that aircraft moves as well. You'll notice there's this little white bar with some arrows across the green section. That is, again, based on your current trajectory, where ForeFlight thinks you are going to cross that aircraft's wake. So the simplest thing here, to, when you look at this is, hmm, is the white bar inside of the green area? That's great. If the white bar is inside of the red area, hmm, I might have to be aware of some wake turbulence coming up and maybe make some decisions. So that's wake turbulence. It's available to, to anyone uh, with ForeFlight Mobile who's connected to ADSB. Uh, and another one of our great alerting features we released this year. Uh, again, uh, in the theme of global expansion, we've uh, introduced VFR charts for the Middle East and South Africa in this release. So we have VFR charts for Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Qatar, uh, as well as Johannesburg and Cape Town. And you can add those to your subscription on fourthlight.com. Okay, moving right along to June, this is Fourthlight Mobile 16.6. First thing we introduce in the June release is letters to airmen. Um, the FAA publishes letters to airmen or LTAs all the time. You can get them on the FAA website, of course, um, but it's uh, there's a lot of useful information in there. And frankly, we think every pilot should be looking at letters to airmen that are relevant to an airport they're flying into or out of. And so we did some work and we actually um, included those FAA documents directly in Four Flight Mobile now. So when you're on the airport's view, and you're looking at uh, a given airport under the procedure section under airport, you can so now select LTAs and you can open up that letter to airmen and, and, and view it uh, directly on your iPad and that'll be downloaded for offline use uh, access as well. Tons of useful information in LTAs, by the way, if you've never looked at them, um, some really, really useful stuff in here. So I encourage you to look at your local airport uh, in Fort Flight and, and check out what LTAs the FAA has published. Another new feature in this release, the June release, was AI airport comment summaries. Uh, so airport comments, what are those? Well, when you're looking at an airport view in, in the application and you go to the comment section here, you can see uh, remarks that have been published by the FAA, but you can also see comments that have been provided by other four flight users. And you can leave your own comments as well by tapping the plus button and adding them uh, directly in the app. This is great. This is a great way for the four flight community to kind of um, give one another a heads up on useful things to know about an airport or the service you got at an FEO, et cetera. Um, but we've gotten so many airport comments lately uh, that we wanted a way to kind of summarize them. And so we've added this at the top of the view where it says pilots say, this is an AI generated airport comment summary. So it scans through all the comments that have been made and summarizes the most important points for you right at the top of the screen. Also in this June release, uh, we introduced a new tab in ForeFlight Mobile. That's not something we do very often. Um, and it's a whole new area of the app we call Discover. Um, you know, ForeFlight is the most powerful EFB out there for planning, for flying, um, but we want it to be even more than that. We want it to be the best way to connect with others in the aviation community. And so we've started with this Discover tab and introducing some, some community features. And one of those first features is events, right? There's tons of great GA events going on all across the country, um, all throughout the year. And uh, we want those to be in the app. We think, you know, more people should know about all the great GA stuff going on nearby them, maybe plan some cross countries, uh, check out uh, pancake, pancake breakfast, what have you. And so we've worked with the great folks at EAA and AOPA to integrate their event databases directly into the app. So you can access the Discover tab uh, under the More menu. If you go into More and then Discover, it'll show up and you'll see the tab that looks like this. And we're looking at events right now. And so we have a map of the US and we're seeing all the upcoming events. Um, I can filter these events by different criteria. So I can select uh, the filter buttons and I can filter for events that are occurring within a specific date range or by a different type of event as well. We have three different categories of events. Learn, which is like educational events. Discover, which is things like air shows and aircraft displays, and then gather, which would be things like uh, EAA chapter meetings, et cetera. Um, so you can filter by date or by category, and you'll see uh, those events update on the map. And you can select an event nearby you on the map, or you can select it in the list. And when you do that, you'll get the event information. And the map will zoom into that area. You'll see all the information about that event. 
a summary of it, when it starts and ends, where it's located, if it's in person, if it's an online event, if it's both, uh, if there's any cost associated, how to register for it and get more information, as well as photo attachments. So if anyone has attached a photo, like a flyer, et cetera, to their event, uh, you can open that up in full screen. So the, the, the first question that we normally get, uh, that we have gotten about this feature is, oh, that's awesome. Well, how do I, how do I get my event into, into the app? And the answer is all you need to do is submit that event to the, either the EAA or AOPA. And you can do that on their event websites, which are linked here on this slide. Um, and as, as long as you submit to EAA or AOPA, that event will show up in ForeFlight Mobile uh, 24 hours later. So it updates every 24 hours. And so we encourage anyone who knows of events that are uh, going on near, nearby them or, or are hosting an event, please submit to EAA or AOPA. And um, it'll get automatically distributed to ForeFlight and sent out to uh, many, many pilots all across the country and the world. The other thing we've added in this new Discover tab is video education. Uh, we do a ton of different types of video education at ForeFlight. Um, you can access our entire video library at foreflight.com slash videos. But uh, you know, we still we still get a lot of questions from folks on, hey, what's new in ForeFlight? Or hey, isn't there a feature that does this? Or how do I make ForeFlight do that for me? And so we decided the best way to to um, continue to educate customers on how, how much power is really available in the app is to integrate our video education courses just directly into the app, just put them in the app. And so we did that and that's in Discover. It's under the education section. We have five categories, getting started, flight planning, maps and charts, flying and navigation, and logging and debriefing. And so you can select a specific category. And then within each category are a series of playlists that walk you through all the different features uh, for a given area of the app. So I could select, for example, map layers and overlays, and I got, I got a whole playlist on all the different types of map layers. And I can tap on one of those videos and I can watch a short little video on uh, exactly how to use that feature. So that's the Discover tab, uh, events and education. We have a lot more coming to the Discover tab uh, uh, soon. Um, and uh, I can't share too much about that yet, but uh, we've got a lot planned for Discover and uh, aviation community content. So stay tuned on that. So we followed the June release with the July release. This came out, um, this came out as ForeFlight Mobile 16.7. And there are a couple of useful features in this release. The first is something we call Aviation Keyboard. Um, up until the July release of ForeFlight, uh, whenever you're entering information in ForeFlight via the keyboard, you're using the default iPad or iPhone keyboard, right? And it's a great keyboard, but it's not necessarily designed uh, for the most efficient input from a pilot's perspective. And so uh, we had a whole team at ForeFlight start uh, working on a way to make a better keyboard for pilots that saves them time, makes it a little bit easier to enter information, um, again, from a, from a pilot's perspective. And so we call it Aviation Keyboard. When you uh, tap in a field in ForeFlight, you'll get a, a keyboard that looks like this. This is the default keyboard or the system keyboard is what iOS calls it. But whenever you see this keyboard, you're now going to see a new button in the top right of the, of the keyboard called Aviation Keyboard. And you can tap on that to switch to the Aviation Keyboard. And when you do, you'll see a new keyboard that looks like this. So it looks very, very similar at first. Uh, you'll notice a couple key differences. The first is that there is a dedicated line of digits up, up at the top, right? So you don't have to swipe on any uh, any characters to get to get numbers now. The numbers are just regular keys up at the top of the screen. Uh, we've added a few uh, a few additional keys here, a degree symbol, minute seconds, et cetera. We've highlighted cardinal direction keys. Um, but where it gets really interesting is if you go to the dedicated numpad. So if I select the number button at the bottom of the screen, now I have a dedicated numpad, which gives me a bunch of commonly used symbols, uh, plus, minus, degrees, minutes, seconds, um, again, cardinal directions, numbers. And we noticed um, in some of the user research we were doing for this feature that People tend to fly with the iPad in all different sorts of configurations. Sometimes it's on their yoke, sometimes it's on their knee, sometimes it's on a suction cup mount on the left, sometimes it's on a mount on the right. And so for ergonomic reasons, we wanted to build in a feature that allowed the numpad to sort of cater to uh, different iPad positions. And so you can select the little keyboard with an arrow button next to uh, on the left side of the keyboard, and this will switch the numpad to the left side or the right side. So it's a little bit easier to reach depending on um, which uh, whichever area you've mounted the, the iPad in. I also wanna highlight that 
the uh, keyboard, the aviation keyboard supports a floating mode. So you can actually collapse the keyboard down to this floating window and you can position this anywhere you want on the screen and always have it there kind of floating uh, and easy, for, uh, easy to use for quick input. So that's the July release. Let's get into August, Fourth Flight Mobile 16.8. Um, the first thing in this release, uh, relatively minor, but again, something that a lot of people have requested, which is Civil Twilight. So Fourth Flight can now show you Civil Twilight times uh, for any airport. Um, when you're on the airport view, up at the top of the screen, there's that little square, that thumbnail of the airport diagram and some information about it. It shows you sunrise and sunset times. If you select the arrow next to the sunrise and sunset times, you now get a ton more information. So you get morning civil twilight, your sunrise, your sunset, your evening civil twilight. Um, and you can actually scroll through this menu and see what's gonna be tomorrow or the next day, et cetera. So hopefully this makes um, planning and logging flights a little bit easier. Um, and this is all dynamically calculated based on time of year and uh, the location of the airport. We also enhanced our profile view in ForeFlight. And I have to say, I think of all the things we've done so far this year, this is the one that I, I'm most excited about. Um, this is something I wanted us to, to do for a while is to improve uh, our profile view uh, and our Navlog in particular. And, and, and we've done just that. I wanna, I wanna show you how this works. So in this release, we added at the bottom of the flight plan drawer, a little dragger. You see that little thing that sticks down there? It's a little dra dragging indicator. And you can now drag the flight plan drawer to be much, much taller on the screen, right? So you can move this up and down and set it to whatever size you want. Now in this in this uh, this route we have here, uh, it's a pretty short route, and so you know we're not making use of this additional vertical screen real estate. However, if I switch over to the nav log view, you can see now we have a ton more information for our for our, visible at the same time for our nav log, right? So we have a lot more legs visible uh, because I've adjusted the vertical height. Um, but most excitingly, in my opinion, is this vertical height. Uh, change allows us to do more stuff with the profile view. So this is the profile view in ForeFlight, and um, we've been adding more and more things to it. And now that we have a little more vertical space to work with, we're working on some more uh, more visualizations that we think might be useful for you. So I'm going to go up into the layer selector here. And when I go into the, I'm going to go into the, the second to last option here, headwind tailwind. This is brand new. This is available for performance plan uh, customers. This is going to show you um, the calculated headwind or tailwind along your route vertically in the cross section in the profile based on the latest winds aloft forecast. And it's color coded, of course, based, to, based on the most favorable tailwinds at different altitudes. Um, another really, really useful feature is the estimated ground speed layer. So I'm gonna select that and based on your aircraft performance profile and based on the current winds aloft forecast, we're gonna show you your estimated ground speed, again, in the vertical cross section, along the route um, and again uh, color coded and highlighted based on the most favorable altitudes so you can see very quickly at a glance how the winds are going to affect uh, your ground speed uh, as you fly you can of course always drag this little slider that has your current altitude you can drag that up and down uh, and that will adjust your cruising altitude if you wanted to change that in flight based on what you see in this view so that's our enhanced profile view it's now vertically adjustable for the edit mode the nav log mode the mode and the profile mode, and we've added uh, the estimated ground speed uh, and headwind uh, tailwind visualizations as well, and more coming uh, to this view in the future. Continuing our, uh, our global expansion here, we also added VFR charts for Northern Africa and the Northern Middle East in this release. So if you're ever flying in those areas, you can add those charts to your subscription on forflight.com. And then finally, we come to the September release. The September release just came out. It's the latest version of Four Flight 16.9. A couple of things I wanted to highlight in this release. The first is helicopter airways. We've got a lot of helicopter pilots using Four Flight these days, uh, both in the US and abroad. And one of the bigger requests we got was the depiction of helicopter airways. If you don't fly helicopters, you may not, you may not even know, but helicopters do have their own airways. They are published. Um, and they're now available in Forflight, and they look like this. And you can enable those under the aeronautical uh, map settings uh, in Forflight on the map. Also, another uh, long requested feature um, took us a little bit longer than I expected to be able to make happen, um, but I'm glad we're here now, is Mexico VFR charts. 
So if you're ever flying uh, to Mexico and you want to have VFR charts for that trip, all of Mexico is covered. There's, these are government source charts directly from the Mexican government. Uh, and you can add those again to your subscription on fourthlight.com. Uh, and then finally, graphical weight and balance. Um, and last, but certainly not least, <laughs> Um, this is a feature we've been working on for a while. Um, you know, Fourthlight has a very powerful weight and balance feature built into it, but it's not graphical, right? Uh, until now, now it is. Um, for those who are on the Performance Plus plan, you can log into fourthlight.com and you can actually set up a custom aircraft interior, right? To position all of your seats, uh, all of your different stations, uh, set, set your station limits. Um, and you have to do this on fourthlight.com today. Um, but once you've set it up, once you've configured your aircraft layout and all of the limits, that, tra that transfers automatically to your iPad. So you'll see a visual depiction as you load your aircraft uh, in the weight and balance section in ForeFlight, totally graphically, um, which is really slick. Um, and again, this is for, for folks on the performance plan, uh, and it's available now. And you just got to go to ForeFlight.com uh, to set that up. So that was a lot of content in the, in 40 minutes. Um, we went through nine major releases. Um, more to come, of course. We're going to have uh, at least two or three more releases left this year. Um, and we've got a lot of exciting things in the works. If you ever want to know, like, hey, what was in the latest release of Fourflight? Um, the best URL I can I can recommend is fourflight.com slash releases. Um, we just have a page there that gives you every release, and you can click on it, and there's a page. It takes you to every feature in that release. Most of them have little videos associated with them. You can learn more. Um, and we keep that updated all the time. So thank you. Thanks for attending. I hope I hope there was something in that presentation uh, that you didn't know about and that you'd like to check out and learn more about. Um, and John, I think we have a few minutes for questions if anyone submitted anything. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ryan. That was fantastic. I uh, consider myself a power user, but got a few things there for sure on my list. I would, by the way, echo the LTA part. That is such a small thing, but I had no idea those yeah. existed. And I've learned a lot reading those about airports as I go into it. So uh, one of those classic four flight features, a little thing that's kind of a big thing. Um, yeah. Got some good questions here. Let me get a couple broad ones to you. One is, uh, I think, a good question about when I'm making changes to my settings. Maybe it's about the alerts I want or the keyboard or some of those things. Does that sync across my account or do I need to change that on each device? You know, if I'm flying with my iPhone and my iPad, I'm running ForeFlight on both, yeah. what will sync there? Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of things in ForeFlight do synchronize by default, right? Things like flight plans, um, aircraft profiles, etc. One thing that does not synchronize is settings. Um, and uh, we've gone back and forth on that internally, um, but we have folks who fly with like an iPad and then they also fly with an iPhone and they like to set up their devices differently. And so by default right now, um, no, settings do not synchronize. So you'll need to set those up separately on each device. Okay, great. Uh, we had a question about traffic, specifically some of those great new traffic alerts, you know, occupied runway, that to me is a, is a, is a huge one. Um, now, how about if I've if I'm using Sentry, but you mentioned the new update with cellular, so I could be connected to cellular, or or even uh, uh, you know a data network while I've got my Sentry. Will I get traffic alerts from the internet-based FlightAware traffic, or is that the Sentry traffic? Talk to us about using different tra traffic sources. Yeah, absolutely. So when when you have an internet connection, you're going to have internet traffic enabled. And that's really useful for just getting a sense of what's going on in a given area and who's flying around. But there is a delay on that, right? There's a delay on that data. And so for that reason, um, we we recommend the only traffic source that you use in flight is ADSB in traffic from a sentry or another traffic device. And thus, the alerts only work when you're connected to an ADSB in traffic source. So it'll it'll rely on only the ADSB data for those alerts, not not internet. Yeah, it's a key distinction, I think. You want that current data there. Um, we've got a question about um, that. I've heard this a lot. You didn't directly address this, although it sort of comes into both the planning and the logbook part. Um, you've probably heard a version of this question before. Is there a recommended way for ForeFlight to account for accomplishing traffic patterns or instrument approaches at a transient airport? So if I'm, you know, got a mini cross-country plan and I'm going to make a stop en route or shoot some approaches, uh, how do I mm -hmm. account for that when I'm planning my flight, maybe especially on the maps page? Yeah, so speaking of the, about the maps page first right now, um, so ForeFlight supports only one departure uh, airport and one destination airport at a time uh, in when adding things like approaches in, in the uh, 
on the map view. Um, so what, what I re generally recommend is setting up the different legs of your of your uh, flight one at a time. You can save those as legs, or um, or they they're all they'll all show up in recents as well. Uh, you can give them a name if you favorite them. Um, so I would just do one leg at a time on the maps view. In terms of logging. Um, Forflight does have uh, a whole UX built into it for logging specific approaches. Uh, it's really up to the individual pilot in terms of what they want to add, in terms of if they want to add things to the comments field, log them sep separately in their logbook, that's up to them. We do have a ton of resources um, on our website, um, forflight.com slash support, that walk through a bunch of um, sort of uh, recommended tips on the best way to, put, to, to, to log flights in Forflight. So I'd recommend checking that out. Great. Uh, we've got a couple questions that I actually think is worth hitting here since we're talking about new features. How do I know if my ForeFlight is up to date on the latest version? And I guess related, if I realize it's not, how do I update it? Or maybe more importantly, what are some reasons why I might not be able to update to the latest version? Sure. So um, in order to get the latest version of ForeFlight, you'll need to be running at least iOS 16 on your device. And you can check what version you have if you go to the More tab and then um, scroll down in this list to About. Um, and you'll see a version there. In this case, I have 16.8.2, which isn't even the latest. So I need to update to the latest version, which is 16.9. Um, so that's how you know the current version you're on. Um, in order to get the latest version or make sure you have the latest version, you can just open up the App Store. Um, and if you go to the ForeFlight, if you search for ForeFlight in the App Store, um, there, there will be an update button there if there's an update available for you. Um, you won't see that if you have the latest and you also won't see it if you're on um, a version of iOS that's lower than iOS 16. You'll continue to get data updates, et cetera, but if you're below iOS 16, you won't get new features moving forward. Yeah, that's always to me a good indicator that uh, if you're not seeing the latest version available, you need to update your iOS. And if you can't even update your iOS, well, then it may be time to update your iPad because it's possible your hardware is old enough that it can't run the latest version of iOS. And that's the limiting factor. So there's there's the hardware element, the iOS element, and then the app element. They all kind of stack on top of each other. Yep. Uh, I've got I've got a sort of generic question here on. Um, on the flights tab, you mentioned this with some of the new features, and I'm still surprised. I see a fair number of pilots who really don't understand the flights tab or maybe don't know about using it. And they, they, they use the maps tab, which I love and it's fantastic. But tell us the benefits of why I should be using the flights tab when I'm planning a flight. Sure. So um, the flights tab we introduced a few years ago, um, and the idea is that you can have sort of this written history in, in, in a form based user experience for planning your flight out. Um, it's very, it's, it's a little bit simpler for certain types of flights uh, and quicker to plan them out on the flights tab than versus the maps tab. So for example, um, looking at a flight right here that I have, let me set this to a current time. Um, I can set a departure destination and very quickly get, generate a briefing right here for that flight. Uh, let me, sorry, let me set that to my Once you set your ETD to an upcoming date, you can very quickly generate a briefing. Um, this briefing uh, is stored on your device. There's a record of it that's stored uh, directly on uh, the ForeFlight servers as well. So if there's ever a question you need to retrieve a briefing or proof that you got a briefing for this flight, uh, in the future, you can request that and we have a copy for you. Um, it also generates a planning nav log, which you know, we talked a little bit about in the presentation. This planning nav log is uh, saved to your device um, and you can access this in flight. You, there's a lot more functionality built in here, though, than, than on the maps tab. So, for example, if you're on the performance subscription, runway analysis, takeoff and landing performance is built in. So you can very quickly access takeoff, your takeoff and landing calculations uh, for your departure and destination airports. Um, you can generate routes here, just like you can on the maps view. But all the payload changes you make here, any of the fuel changes or calculations you make here, um, those are all factored into your weight and balance as well if you're on the performance plan. So I, I would say, and there's a bunch of other stuff I didn't even get to. You can uh, submit fuel orders, select different FBOs here, log your fuel at shutdown, add time in, on, off times, et cetera, uh, pack for the flight here. So there's a ton of functionality just packed into like one vertical form that you can very quickly move down and check all the boxes you need to do for your flight very quickly. And then once you've planned it, it's as simple as going send to map and it sends that that route directly uh, back to the map view. 
Um, and you can do the reverse too. When you're on the flight plan drawer and you're planning a flight and you're like, hmm, I'm gonna get a briefing now. You can just send it to flights. And it takes it over, copies it as a new flight and you can generate a briefing right there. So it's very quickly to move, between, very easy to move between the two. Yeah, it's a great feature, especially for, I find IFR flights or longer cross countries, higher performance airplanes, uh, flights has a lot of features built into it that I think is worth doing. Uh, we got a question about packing. Is packing, when I pack for a flight, is that considered a legal briefing? And I'll just tee up the whole concept of a legal briefing and let you uh, take a swing at that one, Ryan. Sure, so so uh, legal briefing. Um, there, there is no, there is no, the FAA has not published any, anything on like the specific things that constitute a true official legal briefing. Um, the FAA asks that every pilot has received all available information relevant to their flight, right? That's what makes uh, a briefing, a briefing. Um, so packing uh, actually has nothing to do with briefing. So what packing does is when you're, when you're planning a route, so we have this route here, uh, and I go into the pack view here. Um, what Forflight does is it analyzes the route, it analyzes the corridor along the route, and you can see that corridor depicted here. Um, and it tries to figure out, hmm, is there any information that you told Forflight you wanted in the download settings that you don't currently have? So are there any new TFRs that just popped up? Are there any airport notams that you haven't downloaded? What about the, the aerial imagery, right? If you wanted to visualize um, the, your departure destination airports in 3D for situational awareness along the route, as you're flying, you got to download that. So you have it in flight, so you're probably not going to have an internet connection. So PAC just downloads any charts, downloads, et cetera, that uh, are within this corridor along your route. This is not a briefing, right? This is just downloading information so you have it when you go flying, when you're likely not going to have an internet connection. Um, in terms of the briefing itself, there's only one briefing functionality in the flight, and it is the briefing button under flights, which we just went over. Great. Thanks for clearing that up. Uh, question, a specific one, uh, given current news, iOS 18 is out now. A lot of people looking at that, some cool new features. Uh, what's the latest status with ForeFlight and iOS 18? Yeah, so um, whenever Apple releases a new version of iOS, whether it's a, a major release like 17 to 18 or even each of the point releases, um, we go through uh, a whole QA process at ForeFlight to make sure that everything in, in, our, in our application works correctly. Um, with that new version. Um, our QA team is still working on some last minute items for iOS 18. So I don't believe they've given the all clear yet, but I can tell you that that is coming very, very soon. So um, appreciate everyone's patience on that. And we're making a few last tweaks to support iOS 18 and you'll be hearing, you'll be getting an email and a push notification for the all clear for iOS 18, uh, hopefully soon, but not yet. And that's just a good reminder to not resist the urge to hit that update button the first day a major release comes out. It can be fun to try those features, but uh, definitely there's a lot going on under the hood. It's not just for flight, it's a lot of things. Uh, I'll put a shameless plug in for our website from Sporties. We do iPadPilotNews.com and we have an iOS update green light uh, version where we check with multiple app vendors and also accessories, things like Sentry. Uh, so that's a, a great place to check as well, but resist the urge to update on day one. Uh, because there there can always be something there that uh, you just don't know about. So, Ryan, with that, I think we're going to wrap up. Appreciate your expertise and sharing all of your knowledge. Lots of good stuff uh, to dig into there. I know I'm going to go diving for my iPad here and use some of those new features. Again, check out Sporty's YouTube channel for a recording of this if you missed part of it. Uh, and check out sporties.com slash webinars for more webinars like this. And with that, thanks for attending. Hope to see you again on another Sporty's webinar.